So we all love a little bit of drama, don't we? Unless, of course, the drama's actually happening to us. Well, a couple of days ago, 6.15 a.m., I looked at my phone, no, I shouldn't be using it first thing in the morning, but I do, I admit it, I'm addicted. Immediately, I saw a silent notification from Govi, my remote temperature monitor, warning me that the current temperature in the hothouse had reached 40 degrees, a full 25 degrees Celsius above what it should be. And there's more. The warning notification was actually from 11.20 the previous night. So the temperature had been off the charts for the past seven hours. That woke me up fairly quickly, I can tell you. So why it happened, what the potential risks are, and to prevent it happening to you, all coming right up. Let's get started. And we are in. Okay, so the story continues. The hothouse temperature was 40 degrees Celsius when it should have been 15 degrees Celsius overnight. The Govi app showed me in a rather pretty graph just how the temperature had begun to climb at 11.20 the previous night and continued all through the night while I was safely tucked up in bed and none the wiser. Clearly something had gone wrong with either the temperature monitor or my heating setup. So I came running downstairs then running back up again to put some clothes on after remembering that the outside temperatures were around freezing point, so I went to investigate fully clothed this time. And this is what I found. Apart from some very dry plants, everything was fine in the hothouse other than the heater chugging away on full power and the temperature still climbing at around 40 degrees Celsius at that point. So let me quickly explain my setup. I have a fairly cheap two kilowatt fan heater in here, and this particular model has served me well for years. There was nothing wrong with it, it was continuing to do what it was designed to do. I have plugged into it an Inkbird temperature monitor, you can just see it in the back there, that allows me to set up a nighttime and a daytime temperature, different temperatures for each. The controller over here switches the fan heater on or off according to these settings and to the inside temperature of the hothouse. The controller, which is somewhere around this area measures the internal temperature with this sensor. I have the same kind of setup in the greenhouse and it's worked fine for several years, until now of course. So what had actually happened here? Well, the controller had clearly developed a fault. Instead of turning the heater off at the preset 15 degrees Celsius, it did nothing, allowing the heater to continue to work at 2 kilowatts for the next 7 hours. Now, apart from the possible damage to the plants and the eye-watering electricity costs, there is an obvious danger here. I know 40 degrees isn't a huge temperature, but having a fan heater blast out at full power unchecked in an enclosed, well-insulated, unventilated space could be a potential fire hazard. If this had been a grow room in the house or attached to the house, then obviously the potential consequences could have been severe. So obviously I ordered another controller, which I have, it's arrived, I've not changed it yet. But what if I'd been away on holiday? My Govi monitor would still have alerted me, so I could have panicked from afar, but wouldn't have been able to do a single thing about it. The funny thing is, even though I've now got the new controller, this original one has worked perfectly well ever since. Go figure. By the way, if there are any techie people out there who have an idea why and how it could fail just once, then please do illuminate me in the comments. So, back to the story. The glaring question was how to prevent this from happening again. I had a good long think about it, and to be honest, the answer is very obvious. And you might already do this, but honestly, it just never occurred to me before. So for fellow dimwits like me, the solution is as follows. I'm getting ever closer to the floor here so I can show you this heater. So these heaters have their own built-in thermostats. Most of them do. And these cheaper heaters like this one don't usually have very accurate ones, hence the need for a controller. So additionally, I also need a controller that I can set to a different day and nighttime temperature. And up until now, I've always turned on the built-in thermostat to its highest setting, effectively taking it out of the loop so that it wouldn't interfere with the controller. That was my mistake, allowing the heater to run away once the controller had failed. So the thing to do is to set your heater's built-in thermostat to a little above the set temperature. So my daytime temperature in here is set to 18, and at the moment it is 18 degrees Celsius. The controller is here on the right, and I simply turn that down until I hear a click and then turn it back up again by a small amount. I can then test what temperature the built-in thermostat will switch the heater off by simply plugging it into another socket, not the controller, 
I'll let it heat the place up until it clicks off and then I'll be able to see of course what temperature it clicks off. Mine actually switches off now at around 22 degrees Celsius, which I'm perfectly happy with. So there's my fail safe in place should the controller ever fail again in the future. So what do you think? Glaringly obvious or have other folks done the same thing as I have? Tell me in the comments below, but try to be kind. So a disaster was averted and a lesson was learned. And to put a positive spin on it, at least I've got another hopefully useful video out of it. And if you're missing the lovely blooms after all this talk of disasters and fires, this is the video to go and watch next. Orchid blooms are guaranteed to cheer anyone up. So have a great weekend. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.